today, you know, we're, we're joined by internationally renowned, award-winning multimedia composer, <laughs> Lauren Balfe, um, originally from the Highlands of Scotland. Um, Lauren has written everything from solo soundtracks to high energy action blockbusters. And you can hear his work across TV documentaries, TV series, film documentaries, beloved video games, films of every genre, and so it is a joy and a privilege to welcome you here today. Hi, and yeah, thanks. I feel for good. I feel me. I feel good about myself now. I feel like... <laughs> That's just the boost we need on a Monday, right? I am. Uh, I'm going to play this back every every morning I wake up and like, but just, come on, Lord, feel good. <laughs> That's that's the alarm. That's the alarm before the coffee. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Well, I guess just to kick off, uh, going back to the very beginning. I know that you're from Inverness, as am I, great city, um, and that you you got a music scholarship uh, to school. Was music just a part of your everyday life? Like, it was it was it something you always kind of knew that you would end up working with? I guess. Um, I don't. I, the the thing is, I think I was very fortunate that music was was in my family. And, and by doing so, it didn't make it a kind of a weird conversation. It wasn't a shock. And I think a lot of friends who are, are, that are in the arts, it's difficult, especially in the, the older generations. It, it, it wasn't really a career. You know, you, you, if you said, I'm becoming an actor, it'd be like, oh no, yes. you know, get, get a trade or something. So I was brought up um, my father was a songwriter. Um, he had a recording studio, so I was surrounded by musicians and bands. And I don't think I ever thought of it as, oh, this can be a job. I just, I thought it was the norm. Mm. And, and so I was very, uh, uh, that's why I was fortunate because it was just, um, I don't know, my careers advisor kind of suggested that, said, I remember at the time kind of saying, well, the only careers in music is play, playing in an orchestra and being a teacher. That was it. And um, I, I, I suppose I just, I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't focus on it. I just knew I liked music and that was it. I didn't know what, what I wanted to do with it or where or how to do it. Oh, that's really interesting. So with your, I guess with your dad being a songwriter and like, how did you end up going down the film composition route? If it, you know, it wasn't something you necessarily focused in on. No. No, it, again, it was kind of accidental. It was, it was, um, I started doing commercials um, when I was at school. So that got me into writing for, for media. And then, and then, then I started kind of, I, the fact, I, I, I always loved films. That was my, pa that is my passion and was my passion at that age. I know I, I just, being, you know, an only child, the cinema was, watching films was the escapers. You just, it was, it was in the uh, immediate um, entertainment. So, so I think that's how I looked at it. I, I, I kind of started doing short films. As, um, I was at school in Edinburgh, so I was going to the, to the festival all the time um, and seeing plays. And so I started doing short films and then I started doing some plays. And then by doing that, I kind of, I, I realized that, yeah, I, I, I loved watching movies. I, I, and I loved the music in those movies, like Rain Man and um, The Lion King. I, I, it was, that's what interested me. So, so it was just, again, it, it wasn't like there was a, a clear path. There wasn't like, okay, you do this degree and you're gonna get that. It was just, oh, okay, I've just, you do it by experience and meeting filmmakers and um, and getting practice that way. I mean, it's Edinburgh Film Festival, that's, oh, it was at the Fringe, it was at the Fringe Festival they ended up kind of getting all those creative. Uh, well, the, the, the short films was the, from the, the International Festival and then the, fringe, the plays were the Fringe. Amazing. Um, <laughs> but, but it was just, it was, it, you know, I think you've got to, it's no different now. You've just got to find filmmakers um, and network and just, and, and, and um, 
because it, it's a team effort. And that was the thing that I always liked. I, I kind of, I always liked that it took a lot of people to make this one thing and everybody had a, a point of view. Um, you know, some, some, some composers just don't like it, which is weird. It, you know, they, they, they've got a very singular view regarding it and they feel that it's my music, I will create and I don't like people butting in, which I don't, I don't understand firstly, but yeah. <laughs> one, you know, everybody's got their own opinions. Uh, yeah, I mean, for your partnership with Hans Zimmer, you know, is very well known, worked with him on uh, many, many films. Um, yeah. Was it that kind of, that collaboration? Like, how is, how is that uh, influenced kind of your style? What has made that collaboration so long lasting? As you're talking about like a team making something. Oh, you know. It, well, the, it, again, it was kind of pure luck that, I ended up having the, priv the privilege for working for him. I kind of, I went to quite a few music conservatoires and universities. I probably, went, I think I went to about five. I got kicked out of all of them. And um, the, the academic route just was not for me. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, it's no excuse, but I was dyslexic. It, which just made it, it made it difficult. And it made it difficult because there was just no conversation regarding how, how can you actually try to um, get around these problems? Again, this was you know, a long time ago. Um, and um, I just, I'd always been doing work experience, um, uh, being runners on shows, assisting people. So, because I, I saw that, whatever was at college was never going to teach me the real world. It just wasn't. And it still, I, I, it still isn't, I think, personally. Um, so, so I, I ended up moving over to Los Angeles and working in the studio as a runner and, and just kind of worked, worked myself up the ladder really. Um, but, um, but it was a, yeah, I, 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 I think it was about 15 years, it's a long time working for him, but, but it was the best training ever. You know, it, was, it wasn't about learning how to write music, it was learning how to make movies and, and be a filmmaker. And so much more hands-on experience. Um... Yeah, and also seeing how it's done, seeing how it's not done. Yeah. Without, without sitting in, without having the pressure to sit in the big seat. That, that's the thing because it's everybody's got an idea how to make it. they've all got a plot they've all got a script but but it's diff, it's a different situation to get it made mm. and to create um, and and if you're learning on the job the risk is, is that if you get that opportunity then you mess up you get fired so it's it's you know it's to me it was just the, it was the best training and and I try to do the same with, with the team that work with me is to make sure that they get these opportunities and then go out into the real world and That's become amazing. their own individuals. With, um, with that kind of almost like a teaching training collaboration, um, do you kind of, is there like a formulative way that you split up the roles, like someone is in charge of the theme melody and someone is the producing or is it actually no. a brain box of ideas and a brain box it's it's it, it, it's 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 i i think i think i think it's about understanding um i, I one one thing I, i've learned is writing music is a just a percentage about what our job is because it's about translating what's in somebody's head who might not be able to kind of say it musically but they can describe their feelings yeah. um so you could be doing that and then all of a sudden um they may like that melody but then the producers don't so so then you've got to kind of relate to them why doesn't that work and um it, it, but it's it's no different than any other department that mm -hmm. personally that's how i look at it that's really amazing to hear about that kind of teamwork because i don't think it's often uh, people don't register how many different voices and talents come into that process, you know? Uh, yes, I, th I think, 
I think it, I think the kind of, I think there's a feeling that it's very singular. Mm. Um, and I've never seen that in my life in the, in the work, in the real world. It's a very collaborative, it's a, a, a wholly collaborative process where you have to take different people's visions and, 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 and use them. And, and, but again, it's every single department. That's, yeah. that, that's the thing. It's, it's, music's no different than the wardrobe department. It's, it's, it's all about pe the best people get chosen and they bring the, that training to the job. Now the director will have a vision and they may, they may have a clear vision, but, but they will get inspiration from all the other team members. That always strikes me when I'm watching the credits roll is just how yeah. ever many people are involved in one production. Oh, you know. Yeah. And 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 music the mu when it comes to credits, music's always getting the short stick, unfortunately, <laughs> because it, it we there's there's never room to credit all the musicians. Yes, of course. They this they they, they um I think they're changing it now, I believe. They they're changing it now so that you can actually get um uh, they're going to start listing the actual musicians that have played on it. Before it was just the featured soloists, oh, wow. um, and it was just—it's always been a shame that because the orchestra bring the school alive, and they and they and they and they add this color to the movie that didn't exist, and so um, they they should get credited. But thankfully now, I believe they are. That's really great. Yeah, because I've always understood that um, orchestras on film scores, you know. It's like it's the pick of the bunch. It's the oh, yeah. ones who are the best at their instrument. Yeah. Um, because film scores can be so demanding in musical tone, in understanding of score and everything, you know? Yes. Well, that, yes. And it's, and it, it, yes, you're looking at people that have played in the orchestra. It, it's, it's a small number of, of, of professionals that get all the work. And it's very difficult for new blood to kind of come in because they they are so well trained and practiced. They're able to kind of see this piece of music and play it twice, and that's it. You move on. And yeah. And and that's that's through years of experience and and years of session work. Their sight reading skills must be off the charts. Oh, it's 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 sight reading, but also it's 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 the uh, understanding the brief from the composer or the conductor. Mm. It's it's it's. It, it, it's, it's, it's amazing what they do. I can't sight read for, for anything. But, so it, it's what they do is just astonishing. I absolutely agree. I think they're phenomenal. I've always thought session musicians and any professional musician is just another caliber above. That's mm. no, amazing. Um, so kind of going back to your beginnings again, what, just as you're beginning to break through, do you have a memory of like, the first memorable piece of music you wrote for screen, like no, <laughs> no, I, I, I'd have to think. Uh, um, um, it would be, uh, it would be for. I can't remember the the company, the 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 the, the, the chairs that go up the staircase. For, oh yeah, for, for old people, it would have been that. <laughs> that I think that was my first paid gig as a commercial doing that. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so that, so that, you know, that 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 was the beginning, and that was the tr that was the beginning of the path, really. Mm. Um, and uh, and also, it was actually it was an interesting learning curve because it was it was. Uh, seeing how how it worked and, and being given notes and understanding how to translate what the notes are yeah of course um, and yeah. it, it it's yeah it wasn't it's not just about writing the music it, it's about the po the politics that go with it and yeah. um yeah it, it's i i wish i could remember the brand but anyway but that was that was my that, that that's my that's my the first chair. memory the chair yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well I mean, then jumping ahead, I guess, to uh, Megamind, um, yeah. you know, the, the first kind of feature film, uh, I guess. Now, 
animation i i absolutely love animation i love music and animation i think it's fantastic and of course like kind of between the beginnings of animation and music to now it's changed a lot you know the production oh. changed a lot the process has changed and the, a lot. the turn the turnover yes of course um the one thing i was thinking about was like animation projects still take a lot of time like mm -hmm. that that hasn't changed um how is that for the composer i guess on these long three four year potentially you know projects yeah i think i think it depends on you know, the, the rendering the rendering of the picture is getting faster mm. um the quality control is, is the bars go has gone down um there's far more there's, there's far more there's a there's a thirst for content mm. and animation is a especially you see the amount that went into production um, with covid yeah. So much, so much started getting made, um, and um, so, so I, I think on certain levels, it, it, the speed has significantly changed. I think on, um, I, I just finished a new anim uh, an animation for Rumble for Paramount, and that, and that, that even with all the technology, still took the normal amount of time. Um, and I think, I think two years I would have been on it. Gosh, are you, are um, you brought in later in the process or quite early on with that? Um, uh, the thing, I, I think with that, I was maybe halfway through, mm. but, but then, but then, but then there was things to do in the beginning and then there's not nothing to do for, for five months or something. So the, the process is, um, kind of differs it's like video games i i'm i'm working on a video game at the moment that won't come out until um for another three years wow so it's a long <laughs> a long time a, lo a, a long time and quite i guess quite a big commitment when you when you know the timeline ahead um yeah, the good thing about it, at least you know that you're going to get better during those years. <laughs> so, so, so there's you improve. Room for improvement. <laughs> there's room. Yes, there's room. For, you, you you look at it and you go, by then I might be able to write a good theme. So you can just keep practicing it. That's so great. That's a wonderful way of thinking about it. I've got time. I've got time. <laughs> there's got to be some positiveness to it. Um, so I know that you've previously mentioned that you're a percussionist and yeah. I have to say a number of your uh, films have this incredible percussive element and this like rhythmic presence. Um, yeah. Do you find that, I guess, being a percussionist uh, in instrument like that influences and steers your creative process or is it kind of like, oh, that liar, I think? No, 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 it's all... Uh, it's a massive percentage, I'd say. Yeah. I think I think that the, the reason the reason I got into percussion was was um, was really kind of led due to the dyslexia. Um, I was able to see the rhythms, um, but then when doing the piano, the notes, the black on the white, was just jumping out too much. Mm, of course. And I personally just found that difficult. But with percussion, I, I was it was rhythm based. And when writing, um, it's very rhythmic. I'm, I'm writing something at the moment and I'm just looking at it in front of me and it's got, and it's very, it's pattern based. Um, so it, it's a massive, I, I think even, even writing melodies, I think the, that the, the percussion background is part of it. I look at things as in, in, uh, in re repetitive, memorable patterns like a drummer would mm. so i think it's a yeah it's it's sometimes i, I sometimes i think it's probably too apparent because um there's just too much structure sometimes but but yeah i i think i always i always loved percussion i loved drumming and the only reason i gave up i just got fed up of carrying drum kits around <laughs> pubs all the time it's okay. not the most portable instrument <laughs> No, no, you're the, you're the first to arrive to set it up, and then you're the last to leave. Yeah. So it's this, it's 
this it's it's uh, i think i had i had enough of that <laughs> well, i guess too hard work um because you've worked with um chad smith on yeah you know, a couple of projects like i guess being in watching him oh. work like how yeah. is that you know no it's it's, it's a it's a dream come true <laughs> because he because chad is you know i've I got two 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 of my top drummers is Chad and Stuart Copeland from the police okay. and, and Stuart Copeland from the police. He, he, after the police finished the first time, he became a, a film composer and I loved his music, the equalizer wall street. I just adored the scores because it was rhythm based and it was, it was just tonally. I couldn't tell what was going on, but it it, it was intriguing. Um, but Chad, no, it, it's like, he he treats he treats drumming musically and it's a weird way to say it but the thing is is that some drummers are there to support um uh but then there's some drummers that are that that treat it like a a musical instrument i.e they they work with the other instruments manu Kachi is one drummer with uh, peter gabriel um and 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 chad yeah i i get I kind of get all giddy when we're doing a session, and I just I sit on the I sit on the floor whilst he plays things. And I just I kind of it's an absolute luxury luxury to be able to do it, but but I I, I love it. And then and then when we were doing um, a TV show called His Dark Materials, I there was a character and it was his culture that I didn't necessarily want to do a theme. I, I just wanted a rhythm. And I and I've worked everything around the, her rhythm, and then and then recording Chad playing it. Yeah, I, I I lost like two hours of the day. I should I should have been work, actually working, <laughs> but I just I just uh, yeah. It's just uh, you know they they live in these a musician like him. It's just it's 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 uh, yeah. It's just an honor to kind of to to watch playing. Sounds like a dream, just sitting engrossed in his talent. Like it is, it is. <laughs> Did you find that, like, um, on those projects, you you were challenged by what he could produce? That like you were shifting because of what he was bringing. Um, um, uh, yes, and I think it's like all musicians. Um, there's a great cellist called Peter Gregson, yes. who's also a composer. Um, and when he's done something, I I do I do rethink it, and it's the same with the, the same with the with with the orchestra. That that what you've written is of the simply notes. You you then the life happens to it, mm -hmm. and it changes the tone to it. So I think I think if you don't look at it that way, then they're simply robots. Yeah. That's you know, it's what we're doing every day. We've got samples, and we've got a sample of a piano. And you, you what's great about musicians are the imperfections, mm. and it, and and those little mistakes or those little different turns or that, that different interpretation of it. That that is what I think is exciting. It brings an authenticity to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I should have used that word. Yes. <laughs> It's there, it's there. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, musical themes, as we've been yeah. saying, you know, they they can bring you back to the moment that you first saw the film, to the first time you heard that theme, you know, they're full of yeah. nostalgia and importance. And you've worked on sequels and prequels and different versions of previous films, mo a lot of which have established and beloved, you know, musical yeah. themes. Like, yeah. How, how is that to write with, to like incorporate, but also bring your own take to that? Um, it, it's interesting. There's, I've never understood why when you're working on a franchise, you don't use the themes. Um, my conclusion sometimes is they, people don't want to pay for it <laughs> or um, all they want to, they think theirs is better. I. I it's politics also sometimes you're not you can't because it's owned by a different company or um 
so that can be a problem subject. But to me, it's like with Terminator, it, you you've got a an iconic theme, but you've got a very famous rhythm. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. That that you hear when you see him, and it's like Bond with his theme and and with Mission Impossible, the way I kind of I look at it, and and I still look at it because I'm doing it today, is um, imagining how uh, treating it as if it's just been written, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to be nostalgic about it. It, it, it trying to kind of go think. Lale Schiffer has written this amazing theme, but I kind of look at it and think, okay, he, he wrote it yesterday. How will I arrange it? And how can I twist it and make it turn? And um, because Ethan Hunt is that theme and that theme is um, so iconic that uh, I remember the first time I, I got very nervous about it because you don't want to, fluff it up and uh and also you're in awe of it because yeah. you know these these themes are part of our folklore now yeah um they're um and i just um but you've got to kind of you've got to put that to the side um the int feeling intimidated and feeling not worth while you know what you feel worthless touching these themes and um you've just got to just think of it as okay this um how how do we reinvent it mm. i feel like and be and, and also most importantly it's to me it's kind of important for the for the audience um it's their memories of these characters and uh and part of that emotion when you see ethan hunt or you see james bond or you see luke skywalker it, it, it's the baggage is the wrong term but it, but it's 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 the um, emotional memories that you, we have at, sitting in the uh, the audience to these characters yeah massively and of course i mean just talking about you know Schifrin's theme um yeah it's a it's a worldwide known franchise and that theme is in it's in cartoons it's in it's oh. in everything you know yeah it's in parodies it's in commercials it's 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 in sketch it, it is it is part of uh um i i, I kind of dna sometimes you know i, I think it, it, it's it's grown outside the film yeah massively and i have to say like i actually i i loved that your take on the score and there was a i think it was the cue um the the fallout cue or it was either the first cue, I think Storm, Storm is coming. <laughs> um, it's just this, rich, like this constant kind of drum line um, that yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. that tension the whole time. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah. beautiful to listen would, <laughs> Yeah, but it, it, it's just, you know, the thing is, is that subconsciously, I'd probably been writing the score for 20 years because I was a massive fan of the films. And uh, so all these ideas were kind of slowly in the back of the head. It's like, I know what you could do with that. But, but it's, it's all there. And, and you, just, you just have to kind of, it's like the, the concept of the bongos. The bongos were so prominent in the, the original TV show. Um, Love and the TV show, the TV show was very percussive. Um, so the, the kind of and the discoveries of the the plot theme yeah to, to me it's all kind of it, it he he created this kind of one minute 30 that has made hours worth of discoveries it's it's, it's amazing that is incredible i is i just remember those bongos yes <laughs> is that yeah. Bongo line <laughs> uh, yeah the bongo bongo line no but again uh, I can't remember now, I should remember 12 or 14 of just like amazing drummers. Um, because there's, I don't think there are that many professional bongo players in the world. So, um, but just, but, uh, but recording that, yeah, it was just a great, uh, a, a great sound that and a different, and just a different sound, not what you would expect. Yeah, 
no it was phenomenal I loved it um how did you I mean being a fan of the series how did you come onto this project um how did I come um pitching pitching like mad <laughs> um I, I i was fortunate very fortunate to get a, a meeting with the director chris and um we met quite a few times for breakfast and um we talk about the film that he was he had started making and and uh and just talked about life and the industry and and um and we we go back and forth talking about talking about the film and i basically um after the talking i just thought i thought the best thing i could do is just, is to kind of write some music uh because i don't know I don't know what else I can say artistically. The fact is, is that I'm not very good. I don't regard myself as a wordsmith. So um, I thought I'm just going to go write him a letter of music of what, of, of what, what I feel that he's been talking about. And um, I went away and I locked myself in the studio and um, I, maybe I wrote about an hour's worth of music and it was all based on what he was talking about and and the colors and tones that he he um was wanting to make with fallout so so i i did that and it started it started the dialogue and then and then thankfully i got i got brought on i got brought on to the team That's which amazing. was which which was just which was a dream come true because i did, i i you know i I feel that it was, uh, and it still is, a league above me. Um, these movies, and 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 Chris is a filmmaker, and uh, and um, Tom is an actor but a producer, and everybody to do with it. I, I it really is um, the best, of the best with filmmaking. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and Chris is a director and a, and a writer, you know, the usual suspects, it's like, it, it, it's, it, it's just film history that it, it's, it's, um, so yeah, so it, it, it was a it, massive, massive um, uh, compliment to be, to be, to be invited to be part of it, mm. because I really did, and I still do feel it's above, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting way high above we yeah. can um, we can rewind and i'll play the intro again and then i'll be on level okay <laughs> <laughs> um do you find though i mean these the action scores you know they're so mm. high energy high intensity <laughs> i mean we all have the days where our energy levels are subpar do you have a kind of Tricks? Are you go to the street for the coffee? Do you reach for a kombucha? <laughs> I'm barely moving. I've got I've, I've I've got I've got a bad case of arthritis starting. So I'm like, <laughs> my inspiration sure isn't coming from my feet at the moment. Um, um, it's really it it it, it, it it's it's difficult that um, I think. I don't think I'm writing action music. It's just music that's a bit faster, that's all. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, I, I stopped, I stopped, I stopped using being in the mood and inspiration as an excuse a long time ago. Mm. I felt it was a crutch. Interesting, yeah. And it was, and it was, it, it, I, I, I don't, think uh, I I was using it as well no points working today because it, 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 it the very kind of it, be, it would become quite a bohemian type um ethos to me and it doesn't you know we've got deadlines in life yeah um and I work better with a deadline 
because I just I know that I, I kill time sometimes and I just need to know you, this is due tomorrow and then that's it I can just fully but um but no I, I think that um I think action music doesn't get enough credit or I'll say my action music I, I just think generally because I think it's really it's really easy to to do the cliches yes um um but it's very very difficult to try to kind of do a different approach to what action music is and and that music and it doesn't need to be fast some action music can be really so it, it just depends on what the visuals are of course and like i guess leaving sometimes leaving space and silence in a shot is oh powerful but um, but i but i think that's why i think again with chris is that what he's done um his taste with music is is excellent but his taste when not using music is even better i i think that the the um, uh the bathroom fight and fallout yes is is astonishing and and it's what i think is one of the most memorable fight scenes ever there's no music yeah um uh, and all you hear is this heart, uh, the, the, the club music, all you hear is just a soft mm. boom, 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 boom. But it's not important. And, and it shows you, you don't need it. it it's, it's the same as horror films. Horror films are a very difficult genre because you've got, does the music help or doesn't it? And you've, you've got the whole paranormal activity where there is no music and it works perfectly. But then you've got something like The Conjuring where the music, it is continuous but it help works yeah so it's it, it's very difficult um but but the action music is is um it, it's difficult to find those new ways to do to kind of reinvent it i think yeah um and i guess with like the other genres and mediums you've worked on in the same way like approaching the films that are action packed do you find that you have a different approach? Because I guess they're all in need of a great score. Like that's kind of the end goal. They're in need of that fantastic music. But for example, documentaries, I guess, have you, would you research the topic or is it more the characters that drive your creativity? Um, is the approach different? I, uh, um... No, it's 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 it, to me it's the same. Again, a, a game to me is the same as a film. A film is the same as TV. A TV is the same as a commercial. It's about what are we trying? How are we try? How are we helping the narrative of the mm -hmm. story? And um, the, the, the documentaries. I try to do one a year because I love documentaries. I love watching them and I find that I get my information. Um, it, it, it's just a solid period of time to focus on one subject. And I, and I really, I really enjoy that. Um, I don't necessarily have to do research about it because I think if it's, if it's not in the documentary, then it's not a very good one and I shouldn't be doing it. So, so I think, um, uh, I, I, the, the inspiration for all of these things come from what's in front of you. Mm. Is that, do you find um, like a certain, is it the edit or the character or the story arc, or is it just all within? It's everything. Yeah. It's it's everything. At my desk at the moment, I've got to the left of me, I've got um, storyboards. I've got screenshots. Um, just depends on the kind of the projects is, is normally what I do is I kind of I have the visuals running with no sound whilst writing I just have them on loop yeah um because because then you're able uh, to sometimes you get uh, ideas of the different color tones and um yeah I I think all of it brings the inspiration everything that's in front of you brings the inspiration and it's it's like some people say well um if 
I don't know if you have to go too, you don't have to analyze it too deeply, I, because hopefully if it's a great um, TV show or film, then it is there. And the, and the music should be just, I was working on something last year where actually less was less was more. And and removing the themes and removing a lot of the movement. So it's a very thin underscore. Um, because the dialogue didn't need it. Now the, the thing is that is that is that is that then is it an interesting piece of music to listen to? Uh, no, it's not, but it doesn't matter. It's it's what it's doing is is underscoring, and helping the uh, helping the story. Yeah, because then the final product as a whole works so yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Which it's not going to be number one on the Spotify playlist, but but then uh, who's what's more important? Mm. Yeah, and you'd want the final product, the film, the documentary, the TV series to ultimately do well and, you know, exceed yeah. expectations. And if the music yeah. plays an underlying role is what is needed. Yeah. If, if, the, if, 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 if it works as an, a, an album, then it's an added bonus. Yes. That's, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's very interesting how, I guess, even the recent couple of decades, you know, how film production and composition has has changed because yeah some of the most memorable scores in my um watching life uh are mm. moments that have played the uh underlining and highlighting of what's happening without yeah. overruling you know it's just yeah. doing this fantastic thing of carrying that character or this story yep. arc um but i or guess that period of time or yes. that geographical you know it, it, it's it's um uh, but then, yes, it, that's why it's very difficult like, with, with, with film music reviewers. Mm. What are you judging? Yeah. You're judging it as, as, as its own identity or as the actual whole product. Yeah. I mean, seeing, I guess, where, where you have, you know, where you've come from, where you are now, um, how would you say the composition side has changed, you know, looking, thinking of the reviewers and how they analyze things, but in your process and approach to a project, uh, you know, technology has advanced a lot. Um, do you yeah. find yourself more often on like a producer level um, incorporated with the composition or is there still that analog? Yeah. Stuff? Oh, I, I think the difference is, is that, 30 years ago, maybe, people, the composer would sit with the director and play something on the piano and say, it's going to go, it sound like this. Blah, 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 blah. Um, now, you can't, you can't get away with that. You've got to have a finished piece of music. The technology and the quality of what you were writing has got to sound as realistic as as, hu as human humanly, <laughs> computerly maybe possible. Um, people expect high standards now, mm. uh, and um, the quality of your demo is is just just as important as as what is in the demo. I mm. think so. You have to have the producer's hat on as well as the composer because it's got to be a finished piece of, of music. So the technology has significantly changed. It, it, it's also made it more e easy for people to do it. Whereas 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, there was a money constraint that you were, you were, you were restricted by your tools. And those tools did cost a lot of money. Now, the fact is, um, that it still costs money, but people are writing songs on their phones now. Yes. Yeah. Now you can get your one hit song out of it. The question, can you write your second song on it? Um, and, and people aren't going to recording studios any longer. They, they, 
you know, I, I've, I've, my, my, my studio has been in a spare bedroom for the last like seven years. Um, and it's just, so the elitism of it, I think is gone. Mm. So everybody has that chance. Char- everything I use, everybody can buy. I, I use Cubase, which is a very, um, it's a pro- professional platform to sequence in and the sound libraries and uh, that are the same ones that somebody starting off can, can purchase. So, so that kind of separation has gone and there's far more, there's far more people doing it. And there's far more, far more content being made. It's, well, I mean, it's, yes, you mentioned earlier, I guess also really recent, you know, COVID may actually be that catalyst because I've seen, you know, clips of recording and things like that with people makeshifting studio and soundproofing their rooms yeah. to get that content done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I, yeah. It, 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 it's, um, people have had to change the way, yeah, we were recording things. We, we recorded, um, something last year with 30 musicians I think and they were all over the world but they couldn't go to studio so they were all recording in their own um you know their bedrooms Gosh. now the thing is, is that you miss out they, they haven't got the same quality microphones to the top recording studios and also they're kind of left to their own devices there's no interaction so it, it's not as it's not as um as uh, I, I it, it's it's lost what mm, that unique level of creating something is. I guess, and also um, being in that same room with another musician, with other musicians, and that collaboration is something electric. And hearing each other, yeah, in person, yes. But also that one person that. The melody can be eight notes and it's the same notes, but then one person puts a different accent on it or does a different interpretation. That gives inspiration so everyone else will then do it. If you're all locked away by yourself, nobody knows what they're doing and they're, yeah. and they're stuck doing it. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's definitely changed. But what's happening is, is that I think, I think that there is more opportunities to, to be writing now that's for sure there's there's far more projects getting made with the streaming services that there, there seems to be a lot but then there's far more students coming out of yes. uh, of college um looking for work hmm. yeah i mean well looking ahead you know post oh, post covid maybe one day oh, hope so um, maybe <laughs> Um, but I mean, even now, what what future projects can we look forward to hearing? I mean, there's there's uh, something saying that you are entering the Marvel universe as well currently. Yes. Um, yes. Future impossible missions, things like that. Yes. I never talk about the future. I have a I have a I have a fear that the future may change. I think, given recent light, that's probably a wise oh, thing. <laughs> No, you can you can never tell you never tell anything. And also, I just think music is music is music and editorial are very at the end of the projects. Yeah, and can change a lot. And um, uh, it, it's like the wind; they change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just to wrap up, I, just, I can talk for ages with you. This is amazing. Like, I'm absolutely loving it. But um, to make sure that you have time to actually do your amazing work. Um, I have one final question, I guess, on a lighter note. This last year, you know, we've been at home and I guess watching a lot more than we probably would have done beforehand. Yes, um, yes. What has been, do you have like a standout uh, film or even a binge watch TV series that, you know, gripped oh. you last year? I, 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 I wish I could, um talk about french art house black and white noir movies unfortunately it will be come dine with me 
Love or pour it. in a bed or something. <laughs> um, yeah, it's actually, no, I, 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 I've, I've been doing a lot of um, a lo- just really rediscovering old, old movies, mm. 70s, 60s and 50s, which just have just been, um, it, it's fascinating because when you start watching it, you see the inspiration that they have, what they, really what they created. Um, and and how amazing with the restrictiveness of of the technology, um, the, she- the sheer vision that these filmmakers had, and I think it kind of got forgotten about in the nineties. And um, but no, I, I, I lost like the conversation and the Italian job and um, brief encounter, mm-hmm. um, and also a lot of children's movies. <laughs> Yes, a lot, and, and and a lot of them continuously, which which I had never I had never watched movies like um, I had never watched Home Alone. Oh, really? I just never watched it. I suppose because yeah. watching uh, yeah Home Alone three four times in one day, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Charlie and the Ch- Willy Wonka. Yes, um, the old one or the new one. Um, um, both, <laughs> both several times in one day. Uh, but, but again, watching the original, uh, how amazing it, that mm-hmm. movie is, and 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 um, and Gene Wilder, his performance is so it is really dark and really scary, and and I think that's been that's been one also an interesting thing looking at looking at kind of um, remakes, how much darker things were in the seventies and the eighties. Um, we, compared to now, there seems to be uh, that those original movies w- were very were very dark. When we kind of when you when you look back at them, um, so um, but but yes, a, a lot of that, but far too much company. <laughs> I do. I remember there was one episode where a Scottish contestant had a bagpipe entrance for the guests. And I was like, that, that's taking it to another level. Mm. I think you'll find that there's been several like that. Oh, really? Yeah, there was, there was one with a whole pipe band, I think, at one, oh at one, uh, at one point. But, but I, think it's esca- I think it's about escapism. Yeah. And I think that um, there's kind of, yeah, I think there is snobbiness regarding different tv shows and and everything and i just think it's like soap operas some people get great enjoyment out of soap operas and and escapism and and that's it's to me it's it's that's what it's all about it's all about switching off from reality and delving i i've never i've never been a book reader i've just i i never had that been able to kind of vision the, the words and kind of really uh, delve into it and but movies I have because it's an immediate response and um I think I think that's that's what's interesting about what what we all do there's different tastes and there is no right or wrong and when somebody says it's a cheesy action action for oh well so what <laughs> It's it, it might not win an Oscar, but it doesn't really. People are enjoying it, and that's all that matters. And it's and it's it, it's that you know I, I'm so fortunate that I get I get to work with my favorite movies when I was young were Jerry Bruckheimer movies oh. and the, the the Con Air and The Rock uh, and Bad Boys. All these movies were the movies that I went to the cinema to watch, and. Um, and people may criticise them, but but the the point of the cinema is that is that experience, and, and to just be able to just, to, to just think, have that escapism, and 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 it, it's 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 um it's 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 just a privilege to be able to be working with Michael Bay and Jerry, mm. who have made these films that are that are the ones that I would just sit and not leave the house. I still don't. If, if I see Con Air is on TV, I don't leave that. I just kind of sit down for five minutes and then that's it gone. 
or the you know or the rock so it's um but yes come down with me come down with me what a win i mean but as you're saying what's yours what's yours what's mine well not come down with me um but I actually am a sucker for anything with anything with food. So even though come okay. down with me, it's like chef's table, street food, yes. anything like that. Watching people yes. cook food makes me happy. <laughs> yes, it's uh, yes, it's like Master Chef. It's like yes, yes, screaming at it at the screen. <laughs> Not that difficult. Um, um, How you prepare lamb? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't render the fat. Uh, no. And I, that, I, it's that to me is uh, no. I, I I love the shows and and also it, I I think it just it it's a quick in and out. Yeah, that's it. And it's it's but but it's also well made. That's the yeah. thing. It really, it really is. Um, the standard of television nowadays is just. I, I think I think I think there's a higher percentage of more interest in television than film mm. in the last couple of years. I, th I think, and that's because of budgets. That you're, you're looking at what you would spend on a, a, a low budget movie, and it's like, well, I'll just make a TV show out of it. Yeah. So it's it's very difficult for for independent filmmakers. That's for sure. Because yeah. what do you do? Do you make a TV show or you make a movie? Yeah, and I mean, we say we don't like to admit it, but money makes the world go round, and you know, you can. Um, yeah, it's a. It, it's it's the movie business it's it's show business the word business is in it for a reason yeah yeah <laughs> um but i mean i guess also last year you know in in what you're saying kind of like how people can can judge and get quite snobby about it i mean mm. we're all i think we were all looking for joy last year we were all looking for some kind of as you were saying escapism and some yeah some retreat to yes um, to find rest and feel good and you know shows whatever yes. shows, soap opera come down with me an incredible critically acclaimed movie whatever that is for you you know it's it brings you to uh, yes yeah and I, I think that's the great thing about the arts there's just so many different types it's, it's the same as literature there are mm. there's there's trashy novels and then <laughs> there's then there's not <laughs> but um this that's that's all for me and i've taken up a lot of your time i could go no, on it's been my pleasure um it's been an absolute joy so thank you so much for, for my joining. pleasure <laughs> my pleasure my pleasure and, and and anything else i can help with just always touch base oh fantastic uh absolute dream um well stay safe and uh enjoy the rest of your week yeah same to you lovely seeing you lovely to see you too lauren yeah. <laughs> bye 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 <laughs>